This is a non-biased examination of the ancient texts compiled in the Bible which have accurately predicted the future multiple times. These facts are presented without a religious agenda, and all conclusions are drawn completely independent of any religious doctrine, but based on the biblical material itself, using the rules of logic. In this video, we're going to look at the timeline of events that is laid out in Matthew 24 that Jesus gave, which began in 70 CE and culminates with an asteroid impact, a rescue, and the end of the current civilization. We're going to chart this timeline in order to establish a foundation for the overall biblical prophetic timeline and ultimately show in the coming video series that the end of this timeline absolutely must be if these biblical texts are correct, within the next 500 years are more likely to end within the next 10 years and there is a high probability that it may end within the next two years based on the biblical predictions that have come true in recent years. So again, this particular video will cover the timeline in Matthew 24 and most scholars believe that book was written between 80 and 90 CE, so about 2,000 years ago in the first century. Just for reference, the oldest complete Bible manuscripts are the Sinai Bible in the British Library, which has been dated to about 330 CE, and the Codex Vaticanus, which is dated to about 325 CE. So Jesus' timeline starts in Matthew 24, verse 1 and 2. It says, Jesus departed from the Jerusalem temple and said, There shall not be left here one stone upon another. So the first event on Jesus' timeline in Matthew 24 is the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Then his disciples disciples ask what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the world and he says in verse 5 many shall come in my name saying i am christ and deceive many so that is the second event on his timeline then in verse 6 he says you will hear of wars and rumors of wars but the end is not yet nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom so that is the third event on the timeline wars and rumors of wars nation against nation kingdom against kingdom also in verse 7, it says there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, and that is the fourth event on the timeline. And then he says in verse 8 that these are the beginning of sorrows. So the first four events are the beginning of sorrows. Next on the timeline in verse 9, Jesus says, And they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. That is the fifth event on the timeline and after that in verse 10 many will be offended and betray one another so the betrayal is the sixth event on the timeline then in verse 11 it says many false prophets shall rise and deceive many that is the seventh event the rise of the false prophets and verse 12 because iniquity shall abound the love of many will wax cold so after the false prophets rise the love of many will grow cold and right after that, in verse 13, it says, Whoever shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So the endurance until the end happens after the love grows cold. And verse 14 says, The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then the end will come. So the end will come after the gospel reaches the whole world. But notice the timeline doesn't end there. He says next in verse 15, when you see the abomination of desolation that Daniel talked about stand in the holy place, then those in Judea will flee into the mountains. So once we reach the end, we will see the abomination of desolation that Daniel talked about, then those in Judea will flee into the mountains. So when he says endure until the end, he seems to be referring to the time period of the end because there are more events listed after the end. In the text. So the next event on the timeline is in verse 21. It says, For then shall be great tribulation. So at or after they flee into the mountains, the great tribulation will occur. And then he says again in verse 24, There shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. So during the tribulation, false Christs and false prophets, signs and wonders. And the next event after the tribulation, verse 29, he says immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars will fall from heaven. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, he says the sun and moon will go dark and the stars will fall. And that's important right there because we're told in Revelation 9 verse 2 
that the sun and air go dark because a star will hit the earth creating a huge pit and the dust that comes out of that pit will darken the sky. So it's talking about an asteroid impact. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun and moon will go dark and the stars will fall. And that's a reference to Revelation 9, which tells us it's an asteroid that hits the earth. Then in verse 30, it says, Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. It doesn't tell us what that sign is exactly, only that it will occur at the time of or after the stars fall. So at or after the asteroid impact, a sign will appear of the Son of Man in heaven. Then it says, All the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So after the sign of the Son of Man appears in heaven, the earth mourns when they when they see that sign. So that's the King James translation, but notice the word translated as man means mankind or humans, and the word translated as son, 5207, literally means descendant. So it's saying the sign of the descendants of humans will appear or 5316, which means shine or flash in the sky. So verse 30 is saying, and then shall flash the sign of the descendants of humans in heaven. So at or after the asteroid impact shall flash the sign of the descendants of humans in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn when they see the, the descendants of humans go on the clouds to heaven. So this word translated as come also means go. So it says the descendants of humans will go on the clouds to heaven and all the earth will see them at that time. So that escape of the humans to heaven, that may be the sign that flashes. Um, we don't know, but it's saying, we won't know until that happens, if it does happen, but it's saying the human descendants, in other words, the descendants of those that were living 2,000 years ago when this was written, the descendants of them who will be living in the end time will go to heaven and everyone on earth will see that happen. And this will happen at the time or after the asteroid hits, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Then verse 31, his angels shall gather together the elect from heaven. Then the rest of Matthew 24 is riddles. We're not going to go into that in this video. And the final event on Jesus' timeline in Matthew 24 is the gathering of the elect from heaven. So the asteroid has hit. The elect are in the heavenly place. And those on the earth are mourning. So this is Jesus' timeline in Matthew 24, and in order to find out where we are currently on this timeline, we simply plug in what we know has already happened. So the temple that Jesus walked in was the Jerusalem temple, and we know it was destroyed in the siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE. So that is the first event that happened on Jesus' timeline. Then the deception in Christ's name began when the Roman Empire infiltrated Jesus' followers, and in a big way when the Roman Emperor Constantine adopted the Christian cross as his symbol of war. And Constantine literally claimed to have seen a sign in heaven that said, with this sign you will conquer. And there's this sculpture called the Vision of Constantine in, the, in Vatican City that depicts Constantine on a white horse hearing the words, by this sign you will conquer. Well, this is a, re a reference to the first seal in Revelation 6. It's a white horse, and he that sat on him had a crown, and he went forth conquering. So Constantine adopting the Christian cross seem in 312 seems to be the fulfillment of seal 1. And also Constantine adopting that Christian cross um, in 312 started the Christian Roman Empire 
um, which spanned through the Middle Ages, otherwise known as the Dark Ages. And during that reign, there were also many famines, plagues, and earthquakes. This chart lists some of them, and it was also a time of death. By some estimates, there were 50 million people murdered during this time because they didn't agree with the Roman religious doctrine. So all three of these events occurred during the reign of the Roman Empire, the wars, the famines, pestilences, and earthquakes, and also the killing of those who refused to go along with the Roman religious doctrine of war. And that would also be the betrayal because Constantine and other early Roman leaders led the early Christians to believe they were following Christ's teaching of, teachings of love, but instead it later came out that they were murderers and they were only using the name of Christ for power. So that was a betrayal. So the rule of the Christian Roman Empire during the Middle Ages covered all five of these events and the rise of the false prophets probably refers to the popes of the Roman Empire who eventually became like kings themselves during the Holy Roman Empire. And the next event on Jesus' timeline is the love growing cold. And that may also refer to the Dark Ages. We know atmospheric darkness corresponds to a lack of sunlight, which also would be a lack of heat. So the Dark Ages could also be thought of as the Cold Ages. There was a lack of love, a lack of the sun, Jesus, which Psalm 19 tells us the sun represents the bridegroom Jesus. So that is a very deep, profound statement that he made. Their love waxed cold during the Roman church age. But the next thing he says right after that is those who endure until the end will be saved. And notice the endurance until the end does not occur during the final tribulation. It starts when the love grows cold and it ends before the abomination of desolation. So it says the love grows cold, but some endure until the end. And that's a long period of time. That's actually hundreds of years. So it must be referring to entire lineages of humans. So the lineages that survive until the time of the end will be saved. And that's interesting because the leaders who were perpetrating the church age massacres were often the ones who were celibate. And so over long periods of time, their lineage died off. In other words, many of those who ordered the persecutions and murders during that time did not endure until the end, so they won't be saved. So the next thing that's mentioned is the gospel will reach the whole world. And the gospel literally refers to the books that talk about the life of Jesus. The Bible is the most common form of the Gospels, and most people will probably agree the Bible has reached the whole world by now. This is just one estimate of the number of languages the Bible has been translated into by continent, and you can see the Bible has been translated into multiple languages on every inhabited continent by now. So the Gospel has literally reached the whole world by now. So the Gospel has reached the whole world, and that is one reason among many that we know that we are now in the end time. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the abomination of desolation and the rest of these events that Jesus said will occur in the end time. So if you have any questions about anything we've talked about, there are plenty of links below this video in the description box. Just click on show more or click on the description, the link right here that I'll, that I'll put in this video. So you can go to the playlist right here, Bible Prophecy Fulfilled. And if you enjoyed this video or if you want to hear more like it, please consider providing support because I cannot do this without your help. And I just want to say thank you so much to those of you who have made this research possible. I hope you're doing well and I'll talk to you next week.